Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have the first in what will probably be a two part video series where I want to explore both the idea of the 12 factor application, and I'll get to that in a second, and then follow that up with another video uh, that someone else gave me an idea for, which is the evolution of the 12 factor app into the 12 factor agent, uh, the 12 factor agent based app, right? And so that is kind of the two subjects I want to explore. But before I go into, you know, what 12 factor apps are evolving into, I thought it's important to actually go through and explore what is a 12 factor app. You know, why were these developed? Uh, you know, if you're not aware what the 12 factor app methodology is, it's a set of best practices for building modern scalable applications that are really well suited for cloud deployment and continuous delivery. Um, and this aims to address a lot of the common pitfalls that plague software development and maintenance in production environments. So whatever kind of app you're developing, these are probably useful principles to know if you don't already. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, join me on Patreon, it helps me out a lot and you get some extra content, um, but let's get into it. So before I kind of start talking about, hey, what are these individual best practices and, and how you can actually implement them, I want to first discuss, you know, why uh, the 12-factor methodology emerged. Um, and the core philosophy is that it really aims to minimize the time and cost for new developers to join a project and start being effective developers on it. Um, and also to offer maximum portability between execution environments, meaning that if I run code in one execution environment in my dev environment, it's going to run the same within prod. Um, it also means that your platform is designed to be cloud native um, and also has the goal of minimizing divergence between development and production. Again, keeping that portability and environments the same and allowing you to scale up without significant changes to tooling, architecture or development practices so that as you're growing, these, that your application is growing with you. Um, and these principles have really become more and more important as applications grow more complex, teams expand, um, and are basically a set of guidelines to make maintainable, deployable, and scalable applications. So now that we understand the guiding forces behind this, what are the various components that make up a 12-factor application? What are the principles you need to live by? And the first one is code base. Now, the first component in any application is its code base. Um, but within the context of a 12-factor app, the code base really forms the foundation of the methodology. Um, and the idea here is that you want to have one code base to ha align with one application. Um, and that one code base should be tracked with revision control. It can be deployed to multiple environments, you know, dev, staging, prod, and avoids the common anti-pattern of having separate code bases for development, staging, and production. While that might seem logical at first glance, it introduces a ton of issues. Um, and not having those different stages just be different branches within a single code base means that tracking changes and making sure that even those three environments are the same is incredibly difficult. Instead, you should have the same code base that is deployed to any environment but just has configuration changes like changing, hey, what connections is it using in staging versus production? You know, use the staging connections, and then when it's in production, use the environment variables to change it to use the production credentials, right? So you have the same code. The only thing that's changing as it flows through development, staging, and production are the systems it's actually interacting with. And that makes sure that it's able to run in any environment and it is a portable application. Now, the next thing you want to think about are dependencies. Your dependencies in a 12-factor application need to be explicitly declared and isolated. So instead of relying on system-wide packages or implicit dependencies, you're actually going to want to use dependency declaration manifests like a packages.json file for node.js or a requirements.txt for Python, uh, where you have all of the dependencies that are used for this application within a single file. Uh, and that means you have a very clear set of, hey, this is what is needed for this application to run. And then you can also use dependency isolation tools like virtual environments or containers to further ensure that you know no implicit dependencies leak in from any surrounding system. You know, Let's say I'm running something on my local computer. I want to make sure that it doesn't automatically inherit anything I have installed on my local computer because I'm not necessarily going to have that thing installed within the application I'm actually deploying the code to. So that's why you want to make sure that only the packages that are in those you know, two files are the ones that are actually present in your environment. Now, the next principle is config. And config is you know, the idea of basically having <clears throat> all of the values that change between you know, production, staging, and, and, and dev 
contained within configuration files, you know, things like database handles, credentials, environment specific settings. These configurations should all be stored in environment variables or, you know, in a single file rather than hard coded in the application. Um, and this is why config files are a really good way to do this because, hey, you can, you, you don't want to accidentally commit things to version control without adding them to the, or instead of adding them to config file, right? If you're just hard coding variables in, that's really hard to track. It's really hard to iterate on and you might hard code a variable into one application, you know, and you're, that's relevant for the dev environment, but isn't actually gonna work in production. And so that's why having configuration files for each staging, each stage of your pipeline is really critical um, because you don't want to, you know, basically have, you know, a setting from dev leaking to prod by accident you want to make sure prod is only using product credentials and prod values and dev is only using dev credentials and dev values and then that actually leads me to my next uh next thing i want to talk about which is the build release run cycle you want to make sure that the build release and run stages are completely and strictly separated the build stage should just be compiling code and assets the release stage then combines that build with that configuration I just mentioned, and then the run stage actually executes the application. Um, and each release should have a unique identifier and the ability to roll back to previous releases to make sure that you can catch errors really granularly, right? You wanna be able to catch an error in compilation if it's in compilation, or if there's some other configuration, you wanna be able to revert back and just try a new configuration instead of having to recompile, right? And then each release having unique identifier and the ability to roll back to previous releases means that it's really easy to fix something if it actually goes wrong. So it's really critical to keep them separated so you have that ability. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is backing services. Um, so backing services like databases, message queues, external APIs should all be treated as attached resources. And what that means is you have your core application, um, but then you can switch between different service providers or swap out a local code base for a remote one uh, without any code changes. The goal is to have these providers like, hey, database provider, email service, as just modular entities where I don't care what email service I'm using. And more importantly, I'm designing my application to not care what email service or what storage service I'm using. It's all abstracted. And these are just attached resources that I can swap out for the best version of that tool at any time without having to redesign my entire application. Essentially means you don't want to design your application around any one specific service. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are the type of processes you need for a 12-factor application. Um, and 12 processes in 12-factor apps are stateless and share nothing. And what that means is that any persistent data needs to be stored in backing services. So these servers that are kind of brought, <laughs> blocked by my face here. Um, and instead of, you know, hey, I need to go make a request to a server and then actually go and request some more data from a state, serve, a state storage device, right? Um, and this enables much better horizontal scaling and makes individual process crashes much less problematic because you don't have this additional kind of relay here just to get basic information. Instead, the load balancer makes sure that none of your servers actually get overloaded, but that all your servers are still able to, you know, basically send all the information back and work off of all the information they need to actually accomplish that individual process. <clears throat> and you can always just slap on more servers and add them to the load balancer to enable a horizontal auto scaling a lot, a lot easier than in stateful applications. Now, the next concept in 12 factor app is the concept of port binding. Uh, and that means that app export services via port binding rather than relying on the runtime injection of a web server, meaning that the application is entirely self contained. So a person comes in, they interact with the application. That then hits an API endpoint, which then sends a message to a port on a server that then sends it back to that application. Um, and it should be creating its own web facing service by just simply binding to a port um, and using that as a route for its messages, right? Um, and not a super exciting portion of, of, of the app design, but important for optimal performance um, and just making sure that you know everything travels exactly where it needs to go and also maintaining portability by having everything contained within you know your application and then the subsequent api pathways it uses to connect to whatever your backing server is now the next aspect i want to talk about is concurrency um, and concurrency in web application 12 factor applications should be achieved through the process model where rather than scaling by making individual processes larger 12-factor apps scale by running more processes in parallel. Um, so, you know, let's say you, you are doing logins, right? You would have, if you had to scale up for logins, you would scale up additional login servers that are all running the same application and then use a load balancer 
to map and make sure that each of those login servers is only processing the right amount that they can contain. And if you need to get more, if you have more people logging in, you can spin up more servers. And, and you know, along that line, different types of work should be assigned to different process types, like web processes for HTTP requests, worker processes for backend jobs. You'll have different kind of scalable pools of workers depending on which areas of your application actually need it. So you don't need to scale the entire application just to you know, add additional capacity on the you know, website able to handle incoming requests, right? That's something you just scale up the web server for and add additional web servers for. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the concept of disposability. Um, and disposability in full factor apps means that you require processes to start quickly and shut down gracefully. Um, and this is because fast startup times enable really rapid scaling and deployment, while graceful shutdown ensures that current operations complete completely before processes are terminated. So you don't have you know, operations that are getting deleted and spun down halfway and kind of having clung operations. You want them to complete properly before they're actually, before the processes underlying them are actually killed. Um, and this is really critical just to making sure that, hey, you know, I'm able to scale up, scale down really quickly, so I'm able to scale for the needs of my environment. Now, the tenth principle is that you want to make sure you have dev and prod parity. And I've talked about this before, but really just want to emphasize that you want to minimize any gaps between development and production environments. And this, in this case, you, know, you want to make sure you're using the same backing services in development as in production. So if you're using Postgres and Dev, use Postgres and Prod. Don't switch to SQLite, right? Um, and deployments should also happen frequently. And the same people who write code should be involved in deploying and monitoring it because they're going to be the ones that are best informed to actually you know, fix it if something goes wrong. Um, and another great way to make sure that you have Dev and Prod parity is by using Docker to containerize your applications and make sure that everything you know, needed for that application is contained within that Docker image, uh, so you don't have to worry about all these com various components matching up when you go to deploy it. Uh, everything's already contained within that Docker image. Now, the 11th principle you're gonna wanna follow is to treat your logs as event streams written to STD out. An application shouldn't concern itself with routing or storage of fi log files. Instead, you send that app, those logs out, just straight up STD out, and then the execution environment will handle log capture, storage, analysis on the back end. Because an application, you don't want to get clogged up with the routing or storage of log files. Just have those get pumped out to an external process and then have that external process execution environment actually handle you know, storing, capturing, and analyzing all of those logs on the back end. Now, the 12th factor that you want to think about for 12 factor apps are admin processes. Admin processes like database migrations or one-time scripts should run in an identical app uh, environment to regular application processes using the same code base and configuration. Because if you're running a database migration or one-time script in a non-identical environment, you're not gonna get the same results as if you were actually trying to run it in the environment in which you wanted to test it on. Um, so it's really critical to make sure that those admin processes are run in an identical environment that is versioned and managed just like the core application. So that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, just really go through the main 12 factors of a 12 factor application so you can understand what they are and how you can go about implementing them to design really great apps um, and set us up for follow-up video on 12 factor agent applications. So stick around for that one, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.